Mark Verhey here with a 15 frames per second video and that's because I am blocking out all the sunlight from the room because it's very bright out there. Um, Tony, Electric Adventures, he uh, in his latest pickup video he asked us uh, to name the, the three top arcade games that we sunk the most quarters in. So um, yeah, I would like to name the three <laughs> I put the most quarters in. Uh, probably not even necessarily the most uh, the, the arcade games that I like the most but actually the arcade games that I had available to me back in the day which I of course happen to like. But number one is actually yeah Pac-Man <laughs> The mother of all arcade games. Uh, yeah, we had this sitting in various snack bars, uh, fat, foods, fat, food, <laughs> fat, fat food places <laughs> uh, that were scattered around the neighborhood back in the 80s. Um, also at the local cinema, they had a, 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 an arcade cab and always used to put some money in it, uh, waiting uh, for my order, uh, or uh, when there was an intermission at the cinema, I would just chug in some uh, some quarters and just play it. Um, yeah, uh, an iconic game that everybody knows, and yeah, I did pay a lot of quarters to uh, to play it. Now, that that's probably something that a lot of you uh, will have guessed, or not, not sure. Number two actually is Donkey Kong. Uh, this game would sit in a local arcade in El Alfen aan de Rijn called Avifauna. And this game would just be sitting, I know exactly where it was, it was sitting, it was very close to uh, sitting to that game uh, where two of the cowboys uh, are, are shooting, uh, taking shots at each other. But yeah, Donkey Kong, quite an iconic game, and I remember being quite mesmerized by the high resolution graphics that were on screen. Very different to the uh, Philips Video Pack, Pong, or uh, Atari 2600 games that I was used to. Um, the rolling barrels, the, the sounds, the, the flame that is actually um, actually hunting, uh, hunting for you. Also, the uh, intricate details in, uh, in uh, Donkey Kong's uh, cartoon-like graphics. Uh, the fact that it had multiple screens, that the screens changed around contrary to, um, to Pac-Man, which basically just uh, was a single screen and uh, everything just got a bit harder, but it just remained a single screen. And this actually had uh, different screens. And I always used to imagine that there would be a ton of different screens uh, inside of instead of the uh, uh, I believe four levels that are actually contained in the game. I believe you have the uh, the, the first game, the scaffolding game, the uh, this 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 ver this part. Uh, then you have the pie and another scaffolding. Uh, I believe there's four stages in the arcade game. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and it's always very satisfying to just see. Mr. Kong uh, tumbling down and uh, I'm actually hoping I'll be able to show you and yes I am <laughs> so uh, and then uh, another level and it's uh, it, it just continues to get harder and harder but, uh, but yeah this this game uh, got a lot of my quarters it totally did again a, a game that a lot of people know and finally, number three is... Now, I would love to be able to tell you that it's Gyrus, but I actually didn't put that many quarters in it. I played it a lot back home on my Commodore 64, which actually has a very decent port of it. But, uh, <laughs> to be honest, I actually was pretty good at this game, so it didn't eat that much quarters, actually. Uh, Pac-Man, just... Ah, that was just an insidious game that just took my quarters. Donkey Kong as well. This game I actually was pretty good at. So uh, whenever I played it, I only played it for with, with uh, one or two um, uh, credits, and uh, it didn't 
take that many credits because I I thought the, uh, the, the the version on the Commodore 64 uh, actually was decent enough uh, in order for me not to totally waste a lot of money on it. It was actually sitting in the same uh, in the same arcade as uh, Donkey Kong was sitting, but Donkey Kong I had no real home port. I mean, I had Pickaxe Peak, but I didn't have any proper home port of it. And the Atari Soft uh, Pac-Man version on the Commodore 64, well, you know, it wasn't the best. Uh, of course, we had Casey Munchkin on the Philips Video Pick, which I think is actually the superior game uh, if you, if you uh, compare it to Pac-Man. But yeah, as much as I would like to show you that it is actually uh, gyrus, well, it actually isn't. Uh, let me show you what actually what game actually did uh, suck up a lot of my money. Yeah, it's uh, Miss Pac-Man. In the beginning, I did used to put a ton of quarters in there, uh, especially because it was so very very addictive and it featured uh, uh, more than just one uh, screen which in my eyes made it a lot better than the regular Pac-Man version. Um, this also uh, was available at the local cinema at some point. Uh, it also was available in some of the um, fast food places. Um, I actually got a version of Miss Pac-Man on the uh, Commodore 64 and that actually changed it all around because the port on the Commodore 64 actually isn't that bad. It's actually good enough to get me by and I actually became quite good at it uh, eventually and uh, I played this a lot in the States actually uh, when I was uh, doing my laundry at one of these laundromats. I uh, played a ton of levels with just one quarter. Well a lot of my reflexes have, uh, have disappeared since then but this took a lot of my money and I mean a lot of my money. So yeah, uh, these are my top three arcade games that at, at least that I sunk uh, the most money in. Uh, quite a few of these uh, of the other favorite arcade games, I uh, I I uh, um, yeah I got wiser uh, uh, later on. I played my arcade games when they were set free to play, or I played home ports. Actually, Time Pilot, <laughs> the game that Tony uh, showed you. I actually I played that secretly almost for an entire week. I was away at uh, at um, at a summer camp uh, when I was about fourteen. Uh, it was a sailing camp where we are we were supposed to uh, uh, learn how to sail, which actually was quite cool. And uh, I discovered that in one of the rooms that they weren't using, there was this Time Pilot arcade cab. And uh, me and a buddy, we used to sneak uh, to that room uh, whenever we got to do something for ourselves. You know, you, you could go in bed, uh, go to bed, or you could lay in bed, read a book, or you could write letters and stuff. You could go out. We chose to... Uh, to uh, to play the time pilot game that was sitting there in the corner. Uh, we just turned it on and it worked and we played a ton, but it was free. <laughs> we didn't have to put any money in it, so that doesn't count. But I played that arcade game, I, I guess, for the longest period uh, consecutively. How do you say it? For the longest time in a row, for the longest stretch in a row, so yeah. Okay, these are my res video responses. Uh, I'm back to doing my own call shift. And yeah, I really need to, 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 to videotape or videotape to record my videos at a uh, higher, um, uh, <laughs> I say that with more light, but oh well, this, this camera does a good job at it. So Mark signing off and I'll be back with another video soon. Ta-ta.